Hello, it's Chris, and welcome back to the sea. Today, we have another Amiga in for repair. This comes to us from Mr. Chris B. over in New Jersey. He wrote me a little note, just about a page. It says, Hi, Dr. Chris. Thank you so much for looking at my Amiga 1200. I messaged you on Discord. I removed the caps and discovered I caused the following issues. I completely lifted and removed one of the traces for the capacitor behind the keyboard connector, C334. Totally my fault. Hopefully there's a bit of the trace left or a good place to run a patch wire. A21 and C22 are leaky. The Amiga 1200 had worked fine for a couple weeks and then some odd issues started to appear. That's when I reached out about recapping. Hopefully these will fix that. A recapping will fix that. The mouse wouldn't always move. Amiga, kit, Amiga test kit shows a bad Lisa ID. Uh-oh. I started to have difficulty booting from the hard drive, although it could have very well been the 30-year-old hard drive starting to go as well. Please do what you can. If you have any questions or want to let me know how it's going, you can reach me at his email address or Discord and his return address. Thank you again. I really appreciate the help. Chris. So, Mr. Chris, I just cut this open and found the note. Inside we have a black bag and some air bubble, air, air spaces. All right, let's get the box out of the way. And, uh... Yep, hold up. Ankle strap. Yep. Ouch. And we have a black bag. In the black bag, we have a black bag. In the black bag, we have... And Amiga 1200 motherboard. This is a 1D1. And the caps have been removed. Through holes have not been cleaned thoroughly, but that's okay. Oh, yep. 334. Missing a positive pad. 822 near U26, I believe it is, is uh, exposed. Sort of there. Looks like the pads have started to come off or they weren't cleaned properly. Uh, composite area, Lorraine, but not cleaned. That's fine. Nope, everybody else looks okay. So we got like one or two questionable pads to check out. I haven't even looked at her bottom side yet. So I'm gonna have to take the keyboard connector off to get to what was left of this positive potential trace. If you hear any noise upstairs, it's my dog being played with for once. Uh, the two audio decoupling capacitors were... Uh, one looks like it's starting to lift on the ground plane. No problem. Composite circuit, through hole. Cans still look okay. CXA 1145 video encoder looks okay. 821 near the PCMCIA is kind of borked out. The Lisa chip looks, looks okay. It's a CBM Lisa. As far as your mouse movement goes, we'll flip her over to her bottom side. Then we'll take a look at the resistors and the ferrites over here. Then the caps, they're ceramics. Floppy ceramic looks okay. I can't really tell. I'll have to do some resistance values and continuity testings on these ferrite beads. Sometimes they crack and you don't know it. Looks like this one's been replaced once or twice. There you go. That's why your stuff's not working. Look at that. BAM! Somebody burnt the living crap out of the bottom of the freaking transistor network, which is right here underneath. So yeah, that got smoked big time. You stood, butt wide. Wow, that's a mission in itself. Little Hooper Sooch, that's a 99.9 .9 medical grade. Nice old purple alcoholy. We're just gonna let that sit for a second. One, darkness, imprisoning me. Oh yes, that's a uh, that's a little crunchy in there. That could cause some internet and weirdness, you know. Take a fiberglass pen to the area too. So above my crusty finger here at R, I think it's 654. You can now maybe potentially see copper where there is supposed to be right. Where the hell am I? Right above my finger. And uh, it's supposed to be two points right there. The bottom has no copper. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dane. Oh, PCMCIA circuitry, though. Oh, shizzle. Oh, well, the big solder ball that fell off of one of the capacitors 
might be a little bit suspect. So I'm going to grab a poker and see if I can get that out of there. One solder bowl in my skin, but just a little, where is it? Can you see it? That thing was shoved, melted off of something. Could be residual soldering gun. Pins on PCMCIA look to be intact. Now I've noticed some of these have screw holes for adjustment and some don't. So I can tell you right now without even looking at the clock, she's going to be NTSC because we have a tiny channel 2, channel 3 um, yep. modulator, which should come out, but I want to just leave it be for a second. I'm not going to fire this up because of the damage. I'm first going to repair this PCMCIA resistor that's just missing in action. Scrub the goop out of both sides of her butthole. Uh. Wiped all the dookie off and put some fresh solder on there. So a good resource to use when you're doing this stuff is, not that, is Amiga PCB Explorer. I just have it as a favorite. Choose your model, 1200, 1D. And you can highlight the part and it'll tell you what it actually is. I turn my board to Proto. La la la. Flipper to the bottom. Beak. 654. One kilo ohm. Today's interrupter is three people. Mr. Jack from Pints and Amiga sent me a video. It's four minutes long. Mr. Remy has a 386. He's struggling with a Western Digital Controller and a 386. And Mr. Kevin Q, did you fix the marshmallow? That would be my little tiny clown car, the kind of the Kia Soul. Broke today on the way to work. Dropped the cylinder number three coil pack and decided to shut off all the electrics because the battery cable ground through the post and made a little area where it wouldn't touch. Didn't come off, but it was just so loose it was useless information. So I'm going to take the legs off of what's left of these pads. Alright. Okie dokie. I don't know what mysteries unfold before us underneath here minus that exploded resistor that are cleaned up. I do have some more work to do on the other ones that look like dookie. They cracked ferret beat at 579. I see a line split in the middle of it. We'll swap it out. Let me get the keyboard connector removed now. Keyboard connector is out. I would like to thank the two pan in the babushka ground plane non-connected pins that refused to let go. You welcome! So I had to heat them up and hold them while I jiggled her out. So what we're looking at is this positive right here. Foil that's going to stick down there and I'm going to epoxy it with the Northridge Fix UV epoxy. We'll make a new pad. Just for perspective, this is the real size and this is a kosher dill pickle. So I'm drilling out a little hole here. This is a ground plane with a little finger drill. And I know I'm not perfectly straight going in. I'm just trying to make a divot. I'll grab a smaller bit actually, a little thinner one. Something way undersized. Just so I have the room to punch through it. I'm just moving this back and forth with my fingers. You can see. You can see the crap coming out of there. And when I go down, I'll literally run it all the way down and keep turning until I can easily move the part out. The head on these are tapered. So you don't have to worry about drilling through and it actually makes it nice when you're trying to clean up a part, especially on the concrete. You can't melt it. It will not melt. There you go. There's your hole that is now able to get a cap through it. Let's see if I can rebuild uh, this pad here. Metal full of tape. It's sticky. And the idea is I alcohol the living crap out of this to clean it. I'm going to cut this with my electric scissors, electric electrician's scissors, and make myself a perfectly long but small pad. Right here. I'm in the way, I'm sorry. 
Okay, so it's way too long. See how I'm like way long. Look at that. Way long. That's for a reason. I'm going to epoxy this back down with UV curable epoxy and then I'm going to slip off what I don't need and then I'll bond the line that's underneath that word to that epoxy pad. See how it's all covered? Now watch. We'll just cure this for a second. See this? So you see how it's green covered? It's not going to stick to this. So I'm going to take this and just go bip, bip, bip. And what do you know, Lieutenant Dan? Magic likes. Okay, that was fun. Because it is tiny. It runs off the pad into this trace above this hole here. Okay, it's a little gold wire. We're gonna first beep beep test it to make sure I didn't screw it up too bad. These two are bonded. Perfect. Do that. Got connectivity. I need a bench 1200 keyboard. I don't care if it's ugly or beat up or half destroyed, missing keys, whatever. If you have an Amiga 1200 keyboard, I don't care what it looks like, as long as it functions, I could really use one. Alright, about an hour or so later. 18 red caps all done. They're not red. I sharpie them because I'm not good with math and I can't count. It's easier for me to see color and count. If you don't like them, alcohol them off. It's just how I do things. 18 new fresh caps, all Nichicons, uh, even the, the through holes. Can you see that? There's a Nichicon word in there somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, all Nichicon caps, so they should last the rest of our lifetimes. I don't like that power connector, I'll tell you that much. Alright. Powering on. No magic smoke. Do I get a screen? No hard drive. I gotta make a test kit to this, so I'll take that out. There you go! Woohoo! Amiga works. But, does it work work? Let's put a disc in. Amiga test kit. 3.0 ROM, so it should boot as I dig for a mouse. Cool. Turn on the Davoom TiVo. Unplug its power. Oh, it's unplugged. I probably, it's probably dead. Nope. Connector one. Memory. Mouse clicks. Uh, right click. Yep. Uh, let's do controllers and ports. Left, right. There you go. Uh, controller. I'm going to use my Sega, Sega, Sega Master System controller. Up, down, right, left. So up, left, down, right. Button two. Button uh, button two, button one, up, left, down, right. That's a PC mouse. There's your mouse, left, right. Okay, let's go main screen. Uh, memory, whoop, wait a minute. Video, RGB gradient, perfect. Checkerboard, perfect. Pixel altering, doesn't work on this monitor, but perfect. CIA, F8, 33, perfect. CIAs, 60 hertz, perfect, all tests passed. Audio, how does the op amp sound? Let's try it. Woo, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll turn it off, right? Boop, we'll go to 500 hertz. Looking for that universal tone across all four channels, two left, two right. And then you just do music. Perfect. So, that means my capacitor leg mod fix work because right side's getting power. And we're back in action. Another Amiga has been saved, but are we done?
No, no. We have one more test to do. And for that, I need a red GoTech drive. So we'll go display, we'll do PAL, we'll do U, we'll do boot, and we'll say DF1, use boot, and in about 45 seconds, we Am I getting any better at this? Didn't even die. Cool. So with that, another Amiga has been saved. Back from the depths of a bad accident while recapping. And we got her sick. We got her sick. We got her fixed. She's all sorted. Everything's working. So Mr. Chris, you should have your board back by the time this video comes out. And that's all we got for today, so stay tuned for future episodes. If you would like to help continue this fight, please consider joining my Patreon, or just a simple subscribe, a, a like, or a comment, or don't. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and as always, hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.